evening. Woo! She hasn't slept in days. Put your hands together right now for Cat Lee Hong, everyone. Put your hands good news. I met up with a pregnant friend of mine the other day and she told me, hey, guess what? I have twins. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then I had the thought right after, oh, I hope one doesn't eat the other. <laughs> if I was in her shoes, I wouldn't say I wouldn't love the baby, but it wouldn't be in line for favorite. <laughs> I was in a restaurant the other day and a woman was having a terrible time with her baby because you know babies only do three things, they cry, they poop, and they emotionally manipulate you. So I decided to help her out. I grabbed the baby chair and I was, she's like, oh, thank you so much. And I was like, oh, no, it's cool. I understand baby problems. And she's like, oh, you're a mother? I'm like, no. But if there was a baby, my boyfriend and I would have some serious problems. <laughs> I do have a boyfriend, actually. It's the first time in four years, and it feels super good to say that without lying. And, uh... <laughs> the thing about four years is that you kind of forget how to act in relationships, and sometimes he calls me creepy, and I want to I wanna settle this right now. Guys, <laughs> level with me. Is it really so creepy to want to know what brand of lotion he uses? to masturbate with so that I can start to use it and subliminally remind him of how alone he used to be before we were together? I think so. Is it really so creepy to want to kiss all of his boo-boos, whether or not they're internal or psychological? All right, I'm done with that character. Let's pretend I'm single. There we go. notice that um, people who often say, oh, I've hit that, aren't normally in the position to choose. <laughs> <laughs> if the person saying I'd hit that is wearing a sleeveless t-shirt emblazoned with NASCAR, the meaning becomes ambiguous. <laughs> it is driving a car, it becomes vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> There's a billboard back at home where I live, and on it, it's uh, for a hospital, it says, uh, don't know, go to the ER. So move over, Google. <laughs> Doctor, what color should I paint my living room? I'll see myself out. <laughs> My mom was a big advocate of the whole smoke in the pack thing, where if you get caught smoking, you smoke the whole thing and you never want to do it again. And it worked for my brother when he started drinking, it worked for my brother when he started smoking cigarettes. Admittedly, not the right path when he started doing heroin. <laughs> but we had a system in place, bless his soul. We cared. I never had a problem with drugs in high school, and if you want to know my secret, it's this. In order to be peer pressured, you have to have friends. <laughs> I can't snap. I don't have good rhythm. In fact, in elementary school, a kid used to make fun of me for my lack of rhythm. And um, it hurt me for a while, but the shoe was on the other foot when he was diagnosed with that special heart condition. <laughs> When your enemy has an internal defect, it's what's on the inside that counts as both a great moral lesson and a wonderful insult. <laughs> Speaking of moral lessons, uh, if you, I, I think that we would all benefit if everyone just treated each other as they would like to be treated, unless they're a masochist, which in case don't. <laughs> I had a friend of mine who used to live by the moral code of fuck bitches and get money. And for a while, he was a, he was a very successful CEO of a profitable industry. But then was arrested soon after for 40 counts of bestiality. <laughs> fuck bitches, get money. <laughs> you guys seem to like weird ones. Let me give you a few weirds. <laughs> what did the out-of-work porn star say to the charity worker asking for donations? Thank you. I'm sorry, I have no more fucks left to give. Uh, 
<laughs> no, they, they say that knowledge is power, and they're correct. Knowledge is power, and it's called blackmail. And for some of you, I'm the most knowledgeable person in this room. <laughs> Blackmail. <laughs> I feel like there aren't enough female colloquialisms. You know, everybody's like, you're busting my balls and balls to the wall, but there's like the female thing we have right now is like, call me tits, and that's that's kind of unisex because obesity. <laughs> Come up with a female colloquialism, you're welcome to use it. I'm trying to spread it. Alright, so if someone is being a kind of a pain, not going along with you, just being an eye, like, bleh, I won't go into it. But just tell them, tell them, stop being a big baby, you're ripping my vagina. <laughs> There's one more. Um, have you heard that they're making a Fifty Shades of Grey parody with gay horses? Yeah. It's called Fifty Shades of Hey! <laughs> My favorite part about that joke isn't even that punchline. It's the fact that if you laugh, you passively accept the premise of sadomasochistic horse sodomy. <laughs> What's your safety word? Me! <laughs> and that, my friends, is how you beat a dead horse. My name is Kathy. Oh. Keep that applause rolling for Kathleen Hong.